Hi everyone and welcome back to this new episode. Today's video is about restyling my game, but what does that mean? <laughs> Basically, it's just making some graphic changes and the bigger one is changing my render pipeline. So according to Wikipedia, a render pipeline is a conceptual model that describes what steps a graphic system needs to perform to blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Some stuff that you don't want to mess up with and that's why many people including me are using game engines. And I was using Unity with a legacy render pipeline having this graphic, but I knew that one day I had to change it. Well, that day has come, so let's see what happened. I tried URP, but at the end I decided to, to go with HDRP. I wouldn't say it was a difficult process because it's not, but uh, you had to, to take care about a few aspects. So when I converted it, I had something like this, because the very first thing you have to do is converting all your materials. Then I got this weird looking ward, which, not gonna lie, it's maybe better looking than the original game, but that's, uh, that's just, you know, <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. And finally, this is my scene without any sort of light. Uh, I would say it's cool and creepy at the same time, if this is possible. Anyway, after rethinking about the lighting system and adding some post-processing, this is the final look of the scene. I still have to tweak some parameters and uh, <laughs> make a decent skybox, but we're getting there, slowly, but we're getting there. Uh, one of the best things uh, in my case is that volumetric light and volumetric fog are built-in features. And now when you look at a really distant island, you're gonna barely be able to see it, which make everything better looking and at the same time is good for the exploration factor. Previously, it was really bad because you could see everything from everywhere and, and that's not even good for performance. Anyway, these trees are not supposed to be here. Uh, I just wanted to add some green to the scene. I mean, it's a desert, so it's supposed to be like that, but I'm testing graphics and I, I want to see more colors, so... <laughs> That's why. And I finally started making some wind movement to the floor, finally, because it was too static. The volumetric light, it's not a lot because the sun is up in the sky right now, but it's going to be more visible at the end of the day when the sun sets. All right, now, another really cool aspect to consider when you switch from the legacy render pipeline is that you can use a shader graph, which is basically a visual way to create shaders. I tried it and I started making some basic shaders. My very first was this one. Uh, it's just, what is this? It's a cow shader. Anyway, it's just a few notes, but I think like, I, I like it. This is my very first shader. I mean, I have to, I have to like it. Anyway, <laughs> then I found another shader from a guy uh, and I tried to recreate it and it was an LCD monitor. Well, I'm gonna explain it very quickly. You probably already know, but when you search LCD pixels, you're gonna see that each pixel is made up of three colors, red, green, and blue. And depending on which color that pixel is supposed to display, you tweak those values. So back to shaders. What this shader does is pixelate the input image and then recreate pixel by pixel and setting the RGB values according to the color of the pixel. Does that make sense? I think so. Anyway, if I go close enough, I can see the single pixels RGB values, but whenever I start moving, you can see that the image is starting displaying, and it's very cool. Well, at the beginning, I thought to use this for my monitors, like, for example, use it for my drone, but I feel like LCDs doesn't fit really well with a, with a sci-fi looking game. And finally, this is Mach 5 fan art, displayed in a giant screen. I think this is really cool. So my journey with shaders is just started, but I'm already trying to make something usable in the game. So I made a shader for when I place stuff. You can see it in this sphere that it's kind of dissolving. So I reversed it and use it for when I place stuff. So for example, let's say I want to build a wind turbine. You can still see the preview blue when it's placeable and red when not. And when I click the left mouse button, it's gonna start materializing. And of course I can change some values to make it look different with different color, scale, and, uh, and so on. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, in the previous video, I showed you the knife animation. Well, today I'm gonna show you the drill one. So when I have an ore, now I can break it and it's gonna take two or three shots. I did three different animations that randomly play 
and whenever it's done a few pieces spawn um and it's satisfying to do so i feel like i feel like it's good to go yeah maybe yeah we'll see so boys this was it for today i don't have other stuff to show unfortunately uh i really hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe since a lot of you guys are not and i don't see why i mean it's free. What are you waiting for? And if you want to follow some live development streaming, consider following me also on the purple platform. And beside that, have fun and I'll see you guys in the next video.